Uh, hello everyone uh, welcome to this webinar we will be starting very soon so uh, we will be starting like uh, in about uh, four to five minutes we are uh, allowing more participants to join in and then we will start so yeah Uh, meanwhile, uh, if you want to introduce yourself in the uh, like chat, you can do it. So, like, tell us from where you are. If you are a parent, student, or teacher, uh, you can tell, uh, like, describe yourself in the in the chat. We will be just starting off uh, this uh, discussion in just two minutes. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah. Yeah, so I will start the session now. So hello, everyone. I hope you are doing doing well. Uh, welcome to the fifth episode of Talk with Expert, a special webinar series in which notable personalities and industrial experts join us to share their expertise and enlighten us on the topic related to the field of education, AI, and coding. I will just uh, make the slide go on. Uh, this webinar series is a part of Codeover 2020 AI, this year's biggest international AI and coding competition for kids that encourages them to channel their inner innovation and come up with creative solution to real world problems by making AI projects in PictoBlocks. Today, we are going to discuss the importance of 21st century skills for students and how they can, uh, they can uh, accomplish it. And to enlighten us on this topic, we have a panel of expert and change maker with us tonight. Our first guest of the evening is Mr. Nateshan Apaya. Mr. Nateshan is the senior manager, innovation and project based learning at uh, Agastya International Foundation. Agastya Foundation is the Indian Education uh, Trust and non profit organization based in Bangalore, whose mission is to spark curiosity, nurture create, uh, creativity, and build confidence among economically uh, disadvantaged children and teachers in India. The foundation runs hands-on uh, science and art education program in rural and uh, rural uh, semi-urban and urban regions uh, across 19 states and, is, uh, and it is one of the largest mobile hands-on science education program that caters to economically disadvantaged children and government teachers. Uh, teachers. Thank you for uh, thank you uh, for joining us, Mr. Nateshan. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Pankaj. Looking forward to uh, supporting all the way. Sure, sure, sure. Our second guest is uh, Miss Anusha uh, Anusha Siddiqui. Miss Anusha is the head of India AI, a joint initiative of Mighty, NEGD, and NASCOM. India AI has been developed for uh, has been developed to create uh, for creating and nurturing a unified AI ecosystem in country to, uh, to drive uh, excellence and leadership in knowledge creation in order to develop an AI-ready workforce and to use AI for fostering economic growth. Previously, she, uh, she was a full-time product, product manager at NASCOM. She is also the co-founder and ex-COO of Form0.in, a platform that served as a one-stop guide to getting admission in university ac across the country. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Anusha. Thank you. Thanks a lot. This it's Asna, and uh, oh, the sorry. pleasure is all mine. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry no for that. It, uh, yeah. Our third guest of the evening is Ms. Payal Manan Rajpal. Ms. Uh, Payal is the South head, uh, South Asia head of uh, Robotics International, and uh, and annual robotics festival organized by. Robotex, which is an Estonian-based uh, organization. It brings together thousands of engineers, executives, students, families uh, to get inspired by technology, uh, examine new startups, build robots for various challenges, and learn about the latest technology innovations. She is also the director of Robotex India and founder of Hack the Crisis. Uh, thank you for joining us, Ms. Payal. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So before we begin, I would like uh, I would quickly thank our sponsors, the Mutwani Jadeja Foundation US, Talent Republic Mexico, STEM.org US, uh, Liligo, uh, Center for Digital Technology, LBCMF, Zafai Toys, JLC PCB, uh, community, our community partner, India AI, Agastya Foundation, India STEM Alliance, Shiro's, Play to Transform, all our business partners and academic partners for helping us making Codeaver 2020 AI possible and thus this webinar possible as well. So my first question is like, uh, like my first question, uh, like we can start with the discussion right away. So 
my first question uh, is for all of you the world we see today is not uh, is not like it used to be 20 years back like back so today we have uh, like cutting edge technologies uh, shaping our world different disciplines are now getting interlinked and now we have uh, like just having the knowledge of one field is isn't enough so what according to you is uh, like how can we define 21st century skills or how do we say that okay these are the skills of 21st century so miss pile you if you want to go for, uh, with this question uh you are on mute so. sorry Uh, th thank you thank you for that pankaj and uh, i'm glad that we are uh, discussing uh, skills that will uh, shape the future of work as opposed to uh, college degrees so um clearly the future of uh, when we talk about the future of work uh, which is directly you know related correlated to um the 21st century skills or the skills that one must have um you know it it will not be about college degrees but be all about job skills and you know now is our opportunity to steer those without college degrees um towards successful careers and increase um diversity among uh, the workforce um so interestingly the you know um when we talk about the future skills um or the skills of today for the future workforce um it will not be just about hard skills it will also be about holistic job skills so when it comes to uh, employers who are, who look for more than just task oriented or technical skills and um, you know companies want people with an eye for detail creative problem solving thinking uh, a collaborative mindset and an ability to deal with ambiguity and complexity so besides data and ai uh, machine learning robotics cloud computing immersive technologies iot which we call as our technical skills life skills at the same time uh, strategy cognitive thinking communication are um, you know equally important because i speak purely from an education uh, employment and entrepreneurship perspective yeah sir so definitely there is one part which is the technological part that has to be that that is getting on and then there is a personal development part uh, which uh, works on life skill different life skills like collaboration and those part uh, miss asna uh, asna you want to go ahead yeah very well put uh, pile i think you summarized it uh, you know very succinctly but uh, if i were to add anything to that would be uh, i think inquisitiveness is something that we should encourage in a child from the beginning and ensure that uh, they are always uh, willing to learn unlearn their uh, you know anything that is not clear and be open to relearning and also empathy is something that is highly underrated if you uh, practice empathy you're going to be a better team player and not just that you're going to solve for the user whatever it is that you're trying to solve for and not for yourself so that's those are the only two things i would want to add otherwise you know, mentioned it very correctly yeah yeah definitely uh, so miss uh, mr nateshin if you want to go like add something to it so like anything which is inside uh, like uh, 21st century skill yeah like um, according to me like 21st century skills can be referred as uh, the ability set or set of the skills uh, which are need required by the children to succeed in the life and according to me it can be grouped into three categories one is like uh, literacy skills life skills and uh, learning skills and for me like uh, other than this uh, the one thing which i would like to add is uh, the ethics we must teach this uh, ethics skills to the student so that uh, it will build up their uh, um, means holistic thing like uh, when we are teaching them the ethics they will be learning much more into the deeper things relating to the environment relating to the uh, things around them in a wonderful way yeah definitely so like ethics and empathy are the like what i would say is the underrated things that we like uh, most of the people get ignored so yeah that's that's a thing that uh, has to be uh, said when we are talking related to artificial intelligence or new age technology coming in yeah definitely so uh, 
bringing to the next question so like uh, there are some like we have established that uh, there are some skills required which is like uh, which are now required in this uh, is this age that is like communication problem solving creativity critical thinking ethics and all those things we have said that uh, these things are required in order to become ready for the future so how do you think that uh, students can learn this skills so miss pail if you want to go ahead again sure thank you thank you so much and um, you know very well uh, resonating to the thoughts of my uh, panelists and very well um, added on in terms of you know curiosity as a point uh, you know uh, that's fantastic um when we talk about um you know skills uh, you know many skills that had been considered valuable a decade ago are considered obsolete today and there is no doubt that many valuable skills of today will be obsolete in a few years so we are now preparing for jobs that didn't even exist before and the world economy is being you know preempted with disruptive technologies which are transforming how people live and are creating demands for new skills that very few people had just you know a few years ago so i would say that a lot of project based learning thinking of uh a subject with an end goal um experiment uh creating a working prototype is is what i would say how you know the children can sort of adapt themselves uh with the new skills and new age learning so uh, you are saying that majorly like if if we focus on hands on uh like projects or hands on learning where students are more focused towards uh, like creating something with some kind of a discussion uh, in groups and those things uh, rather than just learning about the theory or uh, how like mugging up and all those things you you are saying that uh, hands on learning would uh, like make all this skill possible Yes, hands-on learning and um, you know, project-driven um, learning is what I'm yeah. talking about. So when um, you know, in our ro robotics championships, um, you know, our youngest participant in 2019 was seven and a half years old, who made um, you know a, a, a line follower robot that was input into an agricultural project, which will help the farmer, you know, or will save 25% of his time to sow seeds. Now, this is a seven and a half year old child which. has learned how to create a line follower but then put that model into an agricultural pro project which he learned in environmental studies so you know those are the kind of uh, uh, you know learning that i would definitely um, advocate yeah empathy plus technology bringing both together yeah so uh, uh, mr nateshan if you want to go ahead with your answer like how can student learn these 21st century skills yeah like um... i really agree with the pile like uh, preparing this uh, child for the uh, next uh, generation skills is very important and uh, it is uh, not that easy task but it can be achieved by creating environment for the immersive real world learning like uh, uh, when we take them to the real world they will be learning in a much better way it will help in filling the gap between what they learn in the school to what is actually required and second mm -hmm. thing is like we should create unique experiences which stand out like uh, in terms of uh, by taking them through the journey of aha aha and aha what is meant by aha aha and aha is like uh, when we see something which is uh, unbelievable or the for the first time we say aha and then the journey starts to explore it we will try to explore it what is this how is this what is happening and that is the moment of aha and the last aha is when we find it out like uh, this is the thing of uh, what we are were looking up uh, for or this is the thing what is actually is there that is the joy aha thing when a child goes through this journey then that experience he or she will never forget that will be lifelong experience for them and mm -hmm. the third thing is like we should start early when, what i meant by starting early is like we should introduce these skills to the students at a very early age so that they will be uh, like uh, they will feel related to the things which is happening around they will learn explore more and the last thing i would like to add is like uh, we should avoid the these two uh, mistakes especially these two mistakes one is like looking at this uh, or teaching these skills as a separate entities like uh, these are no separate entities we should uh, integrate these things and second thing is that we should not forget introducing this um, career readiness skills we should make them 
uh, understand what is meant by this career readiness skill so that it will help them uh, for the future. So uh, in the conclusion part, I would just like to say that a space or the classroom where uh, a learner will be much more immersed, where curiosity and creativity runs, and the teacher and the learner will be like collaboratively working with the latest technology available to them. That space mm -hmm. will take them or enable the child to uh, learn the 21st century skills in a better way. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so it was it was very much uh, like described in a manner like how you how you how the students can like use the environment that they have in order to learn these things. So, uh, Miss Asna, if you want to go uh, ahead with your like take. Yeah, I agree to Natesh's point that uh, you know exposure to a variety of experiences is a great way to build, you know, bring up a well-rounded child, and that uh, not just goes for uh, you know any particular stream of education. It is uh, you know uh, it stands true for anything else uh, that child may want to do. Yeah. And you know, since you know right in the beginning of this discussion, we stressed upon life skills. I think uh, those can be acquired if you ensure that uh, you know the child is exposed to a variety of experiences and also hands-on learning, like uh, Payal said, because that will ensure that the child is invested in what he or she is doing. And uh, you know, once you're invested, is when you're really trying to get to the depth of any topic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, like. If I take uh, like uh, like if I conclude this point like it it's the environment that they are uh, they they are uh, like uh, learning these things in and also a lot of experience based learning is the part which uh, would drive uh, how the students would be able to learn the 21st century skills and uh, it's very much important that uh, the uh, the the teacher or the uh, uh, like the people who are teaching to the students would uh, like ma majorly like uh, give them the exposure to try something new or to uh, learn something new. So like if I just uh, say for an example, if uh, uh, it's an example which is not related to the topic that we are going, uh, but uh, if we say about cricket, if the student is given exposure to cricket or those kind of things, then they are able to like uh, develop interest. And later on, if they want to pursue that thing, then they can pursue uh, their interest as well. So it's basically like if they are ex given exposure to the new age technologies, they would get uh, like uh, interested in some kind of 21st century skills. And then uh, they would pursue uh, like they might pursue those things uh, as a like dedicated uh, dedicatedly. So, yeah. OK, so I would be moving on to the next question. So uh, like how does STEM education or hands on learning help students develop 21st century skills so like uh what what does stem education uh brings on to the table and how that can be used in order to make these skills uh like like we have covered those parts but how does stem education comes into the picture so miss asana you you can go Education um, forces the child to um, do critical thinking, which is not just important in your school years, but also throughout your life. So to analyze, to develop an analytical bent of mind is something that um, is, you know, at the center of STEM education. I would say. Apart from that, I think, um, you know, it's, um, you know, when you're uh, experiencing, when you're doing hands-on learning and when you're actually trying to play with the components of uh, what it is that is being taught to you. I think the kind of learning that you take away from that is something that cannot be replicated by just a textbook. So. Yeah, if you, if you want to add some examples to it, you can uh, say add some examples, like any past experience that you have. <laughs> well, um, you know, there are certain, you know, very difficult, uh, you know, programs that I wrote that, you know, that took me, you know, weeks on end, and I would remember those as, uh, you know, the few features of my uh, education experience. I think, you know, the more difficult a problem is, the more time you spend on it, and you know, when you try and attack that problem from different angles, is when it really leaves a mark on you. And uh, you'd not just develop an analytical bent of mind through that uh, journey; you also develop perseverance, which is another, <laughs> I would say, key yeah. skill to have. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, Ms. Pyle, if you want to go ahead and you can add some examples to it. 
Yeah, sure. Um, you know, uh, adding on to what um, um, Asna said and completely, um, uh, you know, agreeing with uh, her thoughts uh, that uh, STEM subjects and soft skills like, you know, analytical thinking will be key for the jobs of tomorrow. So um, and the jobs of future will heavily rely on a good grasp of uh, uh, STEM subjects because it helps to develop the aptitude of um, critical thinking using the approach of solving um, you know, real world problems. Um, but I would also call it STEAM and highlight the A in it. So, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, all sort of perfect to use um, solving real life problems, but also um, A um, as arts has been, uh, you know, so we've been along with robotics teaching kids gamification and we've taught uh, 2000 uh, you know students of um, state government rural and tribal to um, sort of make a game uh, we are uh, sorry play a game and learn music uh, we are uh, that uh, process. We've also had, uh, you know, some uh, in our uh, Hack the Crisis Hackathon, which concluded in uh, April 2020, we had an 11 year old that created a, you know, mental health app. Uh, and we did this uh, hackathon when country was in an absolute lockdown. Um, you know, this app, which was developed, uh, was done by, you know, four school children. The 11 year old was the project lead and they did it in complete isolation. Um, you know, they, they won the sixth spot on uh, Hack the Crisis India, but beautifully using arts and music as a tool for mental health in their app. So, um, you know, not only um, are we looking at STEM here, but we are also looking at how A was highlighted and then when we look at the life skills of working in remote locations communication team building that was all sort of a part of this yeah definitely so like uh now nowadays like steam is also a, a like a very very important thing that is coming on and arts add uh, a lot of like creativity into the project so or uh, like we can add arts as a creativity or as a music and all those things we can add in order to enhance the experience that uh, the like end user is getting okay yeah definitely so mr natation if you want to uh, like add something on this and you can also give an example from your past experience how stem has changed uh, like uh, the students uh, overall like yeah i totally agree with uh, both payal and asana that uh, stem or this team like uh, they play a very vital role in developing the 21st century skills in a child. Uh, like uh, if we are introducing the STEM in a proper way, what I mean by proper way is like not focusing only on the science part or the uh, mathematics part or the arts part. Yeah. It should have all the aspects, uh, all the elements in a certain aspects. Like then only it will give a child the tool or the method of the new on the creative ways of innovating or the problem solving or data analyzing or defining a data or linking to the multiple fields. One of the examples I would like to share is that uh, we often uh, uh, like uh, take our ruler students. We usually work for the ruler students, take yeah. ruler students through the uh, various activity. And uh, some of the activities are research based, which involve the STEM, all those things. Like uh, these two students did a project on uh, making uh, like uh, paper from the banana peels. Uh, they uh, like uh, they did uh, they worked with uh, some of the experts in the engineering college they use some of the technologies and learn the mathematics of it like uh, in which shape the paper will be and uh, be better and what is tensile strength all those things science part all this was involved after this like uh, they went to the competition but they were uh, not fortunate enough to win but uh, their conf confidence level was very high and they said that now they can achieve in uh, in life like uh, now they were not afraid and they were think like uh, um, they have moved to the next level or the next step and they even started to teach uh, these skills to the other students that's what we call it as a peer to peer teaching that is also happening yeah thank you yeah a great example of, uh, so so that was very inspiring how like uh, how how your organization like uh, uh give all these experience to the rural uh students yeah that was great yeah. so uh moving ahead with the next question so like uh 
there like when we talk about stem skills or new age technology then uh, there are uh, there are few technologies that comes into our mind so one of the technology that comes is uh, uh artificial intelligence and coding okay so uh like uh, my next question would be so like uh, what role does these uh, like new age technologies like ai and coding uh like uh play when when it comes to uh, the overall development of students because like a lot of uh, if i uh, like add a point here before we start the discussion so like uh, if we talk about coding so coding add a lot of logic building and problem solving skills into the picture so like uh, you can have uh, you can have students focused on these parts so uh, so uh, according to you how how does coding and artificial intelligence you can take it one by one as well uh, help students develop uh, these things and how they develop their life uh, how can this be developed in the life skills so yeah so miss pile if you want to go first thank you thank you pankaj so um you know i was reading this uh, sort of uh, interesting report by world economic forum that said that more than 1 billion jobs and almost one third of all jobs worldwide are likely to be transformed by technology in the next decade and we talking about um, artificial intelligence machine learning and robotics being the absolute you know entry level fundamental or foundational of it yeah. and um, you know we are already seeing this happen besides that you know i would like to sort of give an example here for uh, the children who are uh, watching this in terms of you know how it plays a pivotal role in terms of you know day to day life that i mean think of a uh, think of the service staff at you know one of the favorite restaurants which is taking your order these days on a tablet you have to scan the menu uh, which means you're also compromising your data but anyway um, that is a separate topic altogether that um you know it's connected to a central order processing system back in the kitchen which has used a very heavy element of you know um ml and automation to sort of um, get that running then the tablet um you know must work without any glitches to make sure that the you know orders are running um, sort of smooth, smoothly and at times you know when you go back to that same place your instead of your server remembering back in the days you know you would like a uh, uh, a bowl of fries or you know your favorite uh, chocolate cake this time around it is um you know the tablet which is prompting that which has a very heavy you know enormous element of artificial intelligence you know sort of built in it and then if we think of the apps we used to chop track orders and stim simply stay informed about you know um uh, day to day uh, uh things in life uh we are we are looking at uh you know the the fact that these are running at all hours day to day so when i said that our data would be compromised so besides ai and ml i would also add in an element of blockchain and cyber security here for the students to at least you know go and make themselves aware of it uh from a you know a perspective of securing the data Um, so yeah, I mean, here's an example of how uh, AI and ML are already being used in day-to-day uh, uh, -day life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I guess like you, you took it to uh, a point like with like uh, telling a lot of applications. Uh, like uh, I was asking in terms of uh, how how like uh, like uh, we uh, like the application that you told was uh, are now going very uh, are very. increasing in terms of uh, getting into specific regions and but uh, also uh, like uh, what are like uh, uh, i i would ask the question uh, to uh, miss asna uh, so uh, according to you like uh, we know uh, that uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning has come a long way and now it's getting into the uh, like uh, students can uh, learn the skills that we were talking about like 21st century well um i think this is your question there are two sides to ai plus education one is us using ai to yeah. help in uh, you know getting better education and then the other is to learning ai in itself so you know the, to the first part i think the world is moving towards hyper personalization and education is not uh, no different Uh, personalized learning is a great application of ai in education evaluation there are so many different ways that ai can help evaluate whether it is uh, you know through uh, you know taking the mundane part of a teacher's job uh, you know over giving it over to ai um 
when it comes to using ai why you know for a student you know while uh, you know in you know adding it to their arsenal of skills um ai is no different than uh, you know regular programming apart from the fact that yeah. you deal with a mountain of data so you know imagine you know we are living under a mountain of data and ai is that sieve which is helping us make sense of mine insights from that mountain of data in the form of diamonds which are those insights so i think uh, ai working on ai um, you know on top of coding can be yeah. a very uh, you know re rewarding experience and at the same time can be you know can reveal a lot of insights that you didn't know exist in the data so that kind of uh, you know feedback mechanism that happens when you're programming in ai that's something which is unparalleled yeah i i i would add an example to that so like uh, one of our uh, student have like a lot of students who who to whom we have may uh, make them aware about ai and machine learning we we make a, a very simple project which is identifying whether i am wearing a mask or not so when 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 they are just training a machine to identify whether i am wearing a mask or not uh, a lot of time what happens is uh, the model that they have created they use their face only okay and their the, the current mask that they have but uh, when they change uh, the when the model is being changed and uh, it being used by other students then uh, their models tend to be like working not accurately so in that process they learn about the deep things like uh, for ai is like a human being only so more data we will be giving it to uh, to learn more accurate it will get so things like this uh, would uh, add a lot in terms of uh, like making the student aware about these technologies and developing and questioning the things why these things are happening so that yes and making it rigorous you know you make it rigorous yeah. by ensuring that you make you know test it against a variety of data so yes yeah, yeah. it builds that rigor in yeah definitely so mr natation if you want to add something on it yeah like uh, undoubtedly this uh, ai technology is going to be next big thing in the world and uh, this uh, ai uh, has the potential to accelerate to create uh, new innovation technology uh, like um, ai when we talk about the ai and the 21st century skills what is happening is like uh, uh, this is supporting um, students in a great way not in all the three categories what i mentioned earlier like learning life and the literacy skills yeah uh, because when we when students are doing ai projects like they will be not only sitting in front of the laptop they have to understand what actually, actually is the problem for example if a child is uh, designing something on uh, traffic or solving the traffic uh, problem then that child has to actually go and see what is the traffic problem and understand it then he or she will get a better understanding which will support in designing a better solution hmm. yeah so the yeah. part is also added here yes yeah definitely definitely so uh this brings me to the next question which is like uh, what is like le let's talk about the different roles and uh, you can also describe about your organization and how you are uh, getting uh, other partners or collaborators on board as well so like how can schools business and government organization empower the like children to develop these skills so uh yeah mr nitesh if you yeah. want to go ahead yeah yeah like uh, with the uh, new nep in the place like we can expect the changes in the education system by yeah. uh, developing the 21st century skills in the students like i believe now is the time for uh, to like uh, leverage the power of collaboration uh, to uh, to bring in this change like building the partnerships with uh, different leaders from the business uh, or the from the educational fields uh it will help us like when we develop this collaborative things then uh, we will be working together in a one direction like uh, for this vision and when we are able to uh, fulfill this vision it will be possible uh, for us to develop uh, a better uh, like a collaborative team which will de uh, develop 21st century skills among the students uh, yeah. so like uh, we are always ready to collaborate uh, even agastya as a thing like we are collaborating with different people different organization different schools and it has been uh, like uh, helping us a lot to reach to many rural students and support them in various ways yeah so can you like just uh, to get to uh, like elaborate on the 
uh, on the things how how you how your collaboration have helped uh, you to expand to like uh, you are working on uh, like 19 states so mm -hmm. how does that uh, has uh, like uh, been for you yeah like uh, when we talk about the collaboration like uh, i would like to uh, like thank our chairman uh, ramji raghavan because uh, he is the person who builds upon the networking system like uh, and he focuses on the networking and collaboration even uh, advises most of the staff members to work on developing those skills like networking and collaboration uh, like uh, we have been collaborating with uh, various institute not only in india abroad also uh, like uh, in seed from the singapore or usa like uh, boston of museum mit those people and india also like uh, indian institute of science uh, Uh, those people and we expose our students to this various uh, te uh, various teachings which we are receiving from different peoples different institutes and uh, like we are giving this to all the students so yeah. this, uh, supporting them and developing their skills also to the, reach the next level yeah definitely so uh, yeah definitely so uh, miss pail if you want to add something uh, on to like you can tell us about your uh, more about how you do partnership with different organization it can be schools businesses and those part and how can schools and business can uh, like uh, uh, get into these kind of things you can uh, like elaborate more on that right thank you thank you pankaj um so yeah i would firstly when we talk about collaborations was very excited to you know sort of see asna here because i've been reading so much about ai for india and um, the fantastic job that you started with uh, teacher training and uh, i think the 8 9th and 10th grade training for ai so you know that's that's fantastic and that's a you know a brilliant example right here um what we've been doing is uh, so we've been working heavily in the public and the private sector and when we talk about you know something that's really passionate and close to my heart is the public sector so we, so rural tribal state governments um and uh, state board schools that we work with uh starting age 6 for our um you know steam uh robotics ai and other future skill programs and our uh, collaborations are with uh, so i was a former spokesperson for um, you know education estonia and finland so uh, most of the collaborations steam from uh, finland and estonia because we know that these countries have been one of the finest in the last uh, you know few decades when we talk about yeah. pisa or oecd so adapting the finnish based model and also the finish based prototype so most of the kits that we use are uh, the prototype do come from either sweden or finland or estonia and then we make them in india and those are the kits that our um, student use uh, even for uh, robotics to ai to steam the gamification course that i mentioned earlier so a lot of um, international collaboration uh, that we've been uh, you know doing since the last 5 uh, years uh, in india and uh, we have also thought of something uh, in terms of how can you make these future skills accessible and affordable for you know why should these expensive skills be only limited to um, the private schools or to the rich kids therefore we started our um, you know non profit uh, in the last 3 years where we worked heavily with the um, state governments and it's it's amazing to see that when uh, one of our tribal uh, you know uh, a, a student from a tribal ashram shala school in 2019 who was um, taught ai and robotics completed 78% of the line followed track at the championship which was commendable that sort of gives us more uh, you know inspiration to do it and second when we look at even the um you know education boards of finland when they know that this is being done for the betterment of the low strata of the society they so something which will be available for 15000 euros is then made available to us for 500 euros and even sort of further downsized because it's for you know giving back of the society so yes we've yeah. had some uh, you know brilliant collaborations with uh, the um, uh, international countries and we've implemented them in india we have uh, programs running in eight languages and uh, it's been fantastic yeah definitely 
so miss ashna uh, like ashna you you have your like your vision is on collaboration and uh, like creating a common a, a very big community so like according to you like how how is this collaboration and community building and all those things are important and how can uh, like uh, like how can like school businesses can start uh, like their first step into these kind of things so like what is uh, like what is your view on that um well schools can uh, ensure that there is an open environment for students to choose the problems that they want to solve for and then create a conducive environment whether it is you know arranging for partnerships that will help them benchmark their abilities against the rest of the world for example i think that is one way to ensure that whatever you're building is you know at least you know in the long shot you're aiming for world class um businesses i think uh, you know i want to uh, you know sort of take a different stance on it and say that uh, you know businesses should highlight uh, role models that are truly representative of the diversity that india has so as for for the students to really for for the you know younger uh, children to look up to uh, role models that they want to aspire to become and when it comes to government i think you know they should parallelly strive for inclusive education across all streams and particularly stem because it's a resource intensive field it is one that requires a lot of resources so yeah. for government to ensure inclusivity um, you know throughout the country is a major task in itself yeah so like uh, just to add to that uh, like there have been a lot of initiatives that our government has started so like uh, atal innovation mission was one part yes. which is yeah. very much uh, like focused towards yes. building the skills then we have the new nep that is coming on which focus on yes. hands on learning and then there is uh, like if you see the curriculums that are coming into cbse and ncert and those parts so there are also like artificial intelligence and programming to uh, like early students is also coming yes. in terms of python and those parts so like uh, uh, how do, how does you think like these government initiatives would help to uh, like uh, like accelerate the process of the uh, of process of learning of course you know when once it is mandatory and part of the curriculum you know you have no uh, you know once you're exposed to the wonders of this technology of uh, you know there will be a percentage of students who will take to it and uh, you know really flourish so i think you know ensuring that uh, every child gets exposed to these technology is uh, was a mandate uh, that has been taken up by the government and is being executed uh, beautifully you know there are atl uh, atal tinkering labs all across the country and you know budget has been set aside for that and they're already you know uh, you know being allocated uh, to universities and other places to set them up so i think the first piece of the puzzle is already uh, in play in terms of resources and i think the rest is uh, hopefully will work out really well if the students stick to it yeah definitely so mainly uh we now have to focus on how we are executing those programs and make it more fruitful for the students yeah definitely. yes um, also um, you know uh, adding on asna your uh, mm -hmm. you know really spot on there because um, even the uh, sort of you know uh, the urgency that we have seen with the state governments and the government forums and bodies to implement these um, you know when we say that rural and state has been uh, you know quick as what it would be in the private sector and um, yes the pandemic is help uh, accelerated even further yeah, yes so the scale of the problem for the government is huge and i think correct. it is um, a big mandate to take on correct and like you said you know um the um atls have set their budget aside and so have a lot of forums and in its great scheme like right, you know for example a fiki flow comes in so they they are sponsoring one of our programs uh, for uh, you know gamification uh, scheme uh, and it's it's nice to see that it's government and we have these external forums for also for, you know helping a larger set of the children community to be uh, you know uh, influenced by it. yeah yeah definitely like a lot of csr are taking these steps forward in order to get this uh, then uh, to like uh, in rural areas or in those part as well so yeah definitely so so uh, like uh, what are the different methods in which uh, like they can uh, start off with? like we have 
like uh, discuss about like okay there is uh, something called like uh, there, there is something called 21st century skills you have uh, schools and those have to take it up now what are the different methods in which they can start off so like uh, uh, i would say it's uh, something like uh, workshops uh, competitions and those parts so like how what in, in uh, like according to you what are the different methods they can start off with and then uh, like uh, they can build their uh, community inside their school or organization so miss pail if you want to go ahead uh, sure so uh, sort of you know i'm going to quote uh, example, uh, so in the past half decade we you know when we been running our report in columbia uh, india uh, we witnessed some uh, you know remarkable innovations from young talent pool and we are talking about age starting 6 to 21 and uh, the championships have over um, 10000 participating nationally and um, you know when you see um, the resilience and their ability to manage time uh you know uh, sort of put that boundary along uh, time based uh, competitions the self awareness the confidence um in various competition categories that we have um so an example here is like in 2019 we had a group of students from bombay uh you know make this e cycle uh, product Uh, and it was i think eighth graders uh, that did this wherein it um, had an electric charge to go up to 120 kilometers as a last mile delivery product that they had created and then after that should there be no electric charge they had these two paddles so one can paddle through and uh, this product was um, you know uh, one of uh, the national uh, winning products and then when they participated in the asia championship they you know got a podium position there and then further on in the uh, european uh, you know olympiad as well and yeah. what was amazing to see is that there were improvements from a regional to a national a national to an asia there were so many product improvements in uh, you know that e cycle that was created and um, you know similarly there are hundreds of examples how all these uh, you know uh, future skills innovations can be applied um, into project based learning but the fact that uh, participating in these competitions not only instills uh, betterment of the product because they're seeing you know in china well like last year in shanghai there were 15000 kids and there was one lego area where i even saw some 4 year old kids who were you know creating their lego prototype and then i saw that our you know indian participants got even more motivated to better their product there was no direct competition but to see someone so much younger do it so i think um, you know championships are absolutely vital to see um, how well the progress of learning has been yeah definitely so competitions are the part which gives them a motive in order to work in a direction and like achieve that uh, goal uh, in a like whatever better way they can come up with so so yeah definitely that's a part so uh, i would ask the question to mr nateshan so like um, like competition is one part so like uh, in this uh, like this codeover competition also was created in order to get awareness out to the schools get awareness out to the like different uh, what i would say businesses uh, or ngos so in this what we created is like we created a a a, a thing like uh, we will do some webinars for the schools uh, which would be a free of cost and after that uh, the students can learn those things and then can uh, like uh, participate in the competition based on their interest or from their learning so in so like uh, uh, the competition is one part so other things like webinars or conducting uh, like short workshops or how uh, how how are like uh, what are the different programs that you use in order to uh, like uh, get all these things uh, started okay like uh, other than the competition like uh, if you want to build upon the skills like uh, we usually uh, have this orientation workshop like a workshops kind of a thing we which we regularly have with the students and uh, uh these workshops uh, will be more focused on the research based or the stem based and the project based learning thing uh like uh, we will be providing them the challenges these challenges will be linked to the real world issues like uh, un sustainable goals kind of a thing uh 
Yeah. So uh, when they are working for UN Sustainable Goals, it is also uh, it is uh, automatically taking them to the real world challenges, and then they are exploring these things through various ways. And uh, uh, we will be having different mentors from our end who will be supporting them on uh, like a time to time periods. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So. uh like once the school got the like awareness or the community has got the awareness about something they can uh, pursue those those uh, things uh, and uh, can get more things started but first they have to know about those things uh, like they, yeah. they they exist and uh, like if i take just an example so like uh, when we created the picto blocks platform and we added artificial intelligence into it so what happened is like uh, before that artificial intelligence was being done majorly from syntax based programming like python and c++ or it was not that uh, easy for students to uh, get started with so after we uh, added artificial intelligence in our pictoblocks platform and made students available to these kind of technology using graphical programming uh, what we have seen that a lot of students uh, and a lot of uh, school principals and teachers were uh, like have have been shocked that okay students of grade 6 can also learn these skills and they can experience what uh, what they can build with these technologies like a uh, uh, mass detector is one part uh, face detection is also things like uh, students know uh, like get to see uh, the technologies like uh, like face unlock so like they can make face unlock with picto block so these things are making them aware through workshops through webinars through like this webinar also would be uh, a very much uh, informative for few participants in order to get started and get motivated uh, about these technologies and these are the things that uh, that are the first steps and after that it's just a like journey that they start on start on yeah so uh my next question would be for uh, like asna so uh, what are like uh, what advice would you give to the parents and the teachers uh, in like uh, in order to get these things developed so like uh, uh, it would be like uh, uh, you you can talk about what are the different things a parent should uh, like consider when they are uh, like letting their uh, children uh, learn about these things and uh, how what should be the mindset of a teacher yeah well uh, first of uh, you know it never gets old let them follow their passion so it doesn't really have to be coding whatever it is be you know let it not be the you know cool thing to do for the children to uh, you know follow a certain stream of um, uh, stream but having said that if a child is showing uh, you know inclination to learn coding i think the job of a parent is to ensure that uh, you know they are providing the right tools and the right learning environment for the child i think being uh, cooperative and encouraging are the only two things that you can be as a parent while you watch your child learn for uh, teachers i think uh, you know as coding is something that is you know it uh, is a feedback mechanism based uh, experience you know you build something you uh, see the results you tweak it and rinse and repeat so i think the role of a teacher should just be to stand back and intervene only when necessary um, i think uh, for both teacher they should do what uh, you know they should inculcate in the child what is called a growth mindset they should ensure that the child learns to uh you know not see anything as a hurdle which cannot be crossed they they know that anything can be learned anything can be uh you know any obstacle can be uh, overcome that's something which of course works across all walks of life but uh, i think you know that in particular comes um, very handy when you're programming or when you're doing yeah. something related to coding and uh, in short you create a positive inquisitive and nurturing environment for the child i think those things that are oft repeated but uh, I, like i said it never gets old yeah they, they, these are like very important things to have in order to get the best out of uh, the time the students are investing in, in, in their classes yeah definitely uh, so uh, i i would ask mr nitesan on the like teacher side like you have a lot of a group of teachers who are working on uh, in teaching these things so like what what has been your uh, advice to them and uh, what is the advice for other teachers as well yeah my advice to the uh, teachers will be like they should be open to the new things like uh, learning new things learning the new skills 
and uh, uh, before like uh, because uh, ai is a new thing and uh, some of the teachers might not be aware of it but uh, that openness to accept it and learn it so that uh, they can teach to other students in a better way is very important and they should provide that environment where it is not like a relationship between a teacher and the student it should be a relationship between like a, a family kind of a thing where they can relate to each other and they can sh uh, share the each other's learning like it is a co learning environment what they have to create so that uh, growth mindset they have to develop and they have to develop that openness and environment yeah definitely so like uh, if we talk about teachers as well their personal development is also very important and if they are investing time in learning and uh, new skills they would be more uh, like uh, they would be more comfortable when these things comes into the mainstream so like yeah definitely so uh, my question next question would be to miss pile so like uh, what are the advice you would give to the students okay that's a tough one uh listen to what the previous panelists said and listen to your parents <laughs> yeah. um but uh yeah to the students i would say that you know um steam foundation and um you know the future skills are quite imperative however the um, educations uh, you know age old uh, threes which are are reading writing and arithmetic uh, are now being joined by a four which is rethink so predominantly use um you know technology to rethink uh, because developing this particular skill and muscle will further strengthen uh, your future when i think about entrepreneurship or uh, employment and um, you know remember that technical skills plus life skills is a winner for um, future workforce and lastly i would say something that i always tell the students parents and teachers that you know the four c's which is um uh, creativity critical thinking communication and collaboration always so yeah yeah definitely uh anything you want to add miss asma well it might be an extreme thing to say but the, i strongly believe that the future is ai ai is so uh, tightly ingrained into everything that we experience these days that you know we've come to expect it as um, you know we don't really second guess it um, i think the future work teams will be cross functional because you know there will be an element of ai and there will be the domain uh, experts also who who will be sitting on top of that uh, layer so i think um, students shouldn't think of uh, coding and technology and ai as a separate a skill for those who are you know who go for it and if they're into something else they should keep an open mind and also look at uh, you know ai as a problem solver and uh, you know consider it as a black box to understand what it is that it can do for their domain which is uh, a perspective which will co come in very handy when they are in those cross functional teams that i just spoke about yeah interdisciplinary things are yes. now, now coming ahead and we we are seeing agriculture being uh, added to like artificial intelligence being used in agriculture healthcare yeah. like retail manufacturing retail. bsi already. is already you know so you name it and ai is part of it so you cannot uh, be part of a domain and think that it's not going to, you don't need to know about ai true and yeah. it's like when when you rightly said that the future is ai there is um you know no two ways about it it's uh, it's it's going to be like a uh, science so there will be steam and i think yeah. plus ai after steam there'll be another extension to it yeah it has uh, like it's already in cbse now uh, mm -hmm. but it's uh, like not mandatory but uh, i think like uh, the how how computer uh, science like computer science has been getting inside the uh, things ai would also be uh, in future would be coming in mainstream and like like uh, if we see a lot of uh, engineering college big co like big college like iit roorkee have added a full uh, btech program in uh, artificial intelligence so like now it's have come into the mainstream of colleges and uh, it would be in, uh, getting mainstream in uh, like schools uh, between school students as well so uh, that would be a very good thing to see happening uh, in the uh, like in the near future definitely so uh, yeah this was a very fruitful discussion so uh, like uh, as we like uh, 
like this like uh it's already time so i will be concluding the discussion now so like uh, as we discussed like uh, competitions and uh, a lot of different things that we do play an important role in empowering children to develop must have 21st century skill and prepare for our future so uh, codever 2020 ai is doing exactly that so now uh, like very uh, like a lot of you might not be like uh, might be aware about codever 2020 ai or some of you might not be aware so uh, i would be playing a video in order to uh, make you understand about codever and uh, how you can participate into that as well and if you have any question that you want to ask our panelists we can have two or three minutes of that part as well so uh, we will we have the chat open so you can uh, ask uh, while the video is playing so i would request all of you to just mute your audio so that uh, there is no echo introducing codever 2020 ai this year's biggest international ai and coding competition for kids the aim is to make the world a better place by solving real world problems using ai and coding based on the following themes beat the pandemic with ai think automation ai and coding for the win entangling transport systems and the 2020 space odyssey anyone 7 years old and above can participate in one of these age groups yes you can either participate as a one person army or in a team of 2 anything you can create your own story game software based ai project or a hardware based project in pictoblox it is an interactive ai education and coding platform you can learn to code make interactive animations and games interesting projects based on ai program actions for robots and much more with the pictoblox app Now available on Play Store, you can even make your projects for the competition on the go. Follow these three easy steps to participate. First, go to the registration page and register yourself or your team. Once registered, the portal will take you to the learning page. where you can learn ai and coding with our video tutorials and interactive tutor led online courses now that you have the skills required it's time to show the world what you have got choose your theme and brainstorm on your project then submit the project brief pictoblox project file and a video of the project on the submission page Now all you have to do is sit back and wait for the results. The registration for Codever 2020 AI starts from 2nd October. The last date to submit your project is 20th December 2020. You can register any time between 2nd October and 20th December. The winners of Codever 2020 AI will be announced on 10th January 2021. Participants stand a chance to win 50 plus prizes worth $6000 in total. The winner of each age group will get an Apple iPad. Two first runner-ups in each age group will get exciting STEM education kits. Two second runner-ups in each age group will get smartwatch kits. But these are not all. There are many special category prizes too. All the winners will also receive a medal. certificate and the official codever 2020 ai t-shirt so what are you waiting for register today i think you are on mute 
yeah so that was about code ever 2020 ai so uh, somebody has asked me that uh, uh, about quarky so there are some updates that we have added in code ever from the uh, our previous episode so like uh, now we are running a refer and win program uh, on code ever it's like uh, if you have if you are already a registered team then you can refer the code uh, code ever to like uh, six or 12 teams and uh, 12 teams and you would be getting exciting robotics kit that we are developing and you uh, that is coming on uh, like coming uh, in the market very soon so we have added a very sneak peek on codever thing uh, codever uh, website so uh, you can check your dashboard you can check your uh, when you log in you would be uh, getting a refer program so you can refer the program uh, refer codever to your uh, like fellow friend and uh, uh, you would be uh, you would be getting a uh, code uh, like quarky as a quarky kits as a uh, prize as well so uh, and uh, there is also one update that i wanted to give uh, is like we have crossed more than like 3500 teams being uh, registered on codever as well so uh, and we are looking forward to get it more than 5000 so it's going uh, very good so like uh, uh any anything uh any closing remark that uh, our panelists would give want to give like uh, in one minute they can just give and then we can close out this session yeah so i we, we can start from ms asna yeah very excited to see uh, the kind of solutions that get built by these students i was uh, yeah. on the panel of one of the um atul uh, challenges and uh, the solutions that came in through them were very interesting given that they were by such young children so yeah i would really want to stay clued into that so and thanks a lot for having me it was a pleasure yeah thank you thank you for giving us time uh, and yeah uh, mr uh, nateesh if you want to add something yeah like uh, i would like to thank uh, for making part of this uh, wonderful webinar and uh, like uh, i saw there were participants from uh, not only india but abroad also like um, yeah. uh, interacting with them was really a great thing and uh, other than this i would like to say something for the students that uh, they need to explore new skills and they need to start early and uh, uh, just uh, don't think about the failure like uh, even so you can celebrate the failures also because uh, uh, when we learn to celebrate the failures then only we are at uh, the edge of the next level we will be moving ahead yeah you you added a very very important point uh, that uh, we haven't taken on the web, uh, on the discussion but learning from the uh, from the failure and moving uh, to uh, ahead is also a very important thing it's like a, just for an example when we are when we are making some programs it might not work for the first time it might not work for the second time but uh, uh finding out the solution and making it work is a is a thing that uh, everyone should learn and should appreciate uh, as a very important life skill yeah definitely thank you uh thank you thank you for uh, coming on uh this file if you want to add some concluding words um i would uh, like to say it's remarkable to see such an uh, enormous amount of uh, innovation being done uh, you know with the students that are participating in your competition so i would just wish um, all of them all the best uh, keep learning keep innovating and um, yes i'm looking forward to um, seeing the uh, you know participants and the uh, you know solutions and the innovations that come out of it and thank you for having me today i yeah. was happy to um, interact with you pankaj and um, asna and our, our other fellow panelists thank you yeah. likewise so uh, yeah and also i would like to uh, add few words so like uh, we have like uh, at, at the back uh, we like back side of the code ever we have been seeing a lot of innovative projects coming on from the students and uh, when the code ever competition will end we will make all the projects go public so that other students can also learn from it so it's it will not be something like uh, my creation would not be shared with other people but it would be something that you have worked for a long time and other people would also be learning a lot so so that's uh, a thing which would mot uh, which would motivate uh, like uh, Uh, like which is very motivational for us and uh, we have seen a very innovative projects coming on based on artificial intelligence based on robotics as well so a lot of solutions has been coming on uh, in terms of the themes that we have uh, chosen for this year 
yeah so someone has doubt uh, on the last date of submission so like uh, last date of submission currently is 20th of jan uh, 20th of december and uh, like uh, we will be adding more updates about codeover 2020 ai on the website so keep yourself informed and we will we, we will also send some uh, updates on the sms so that you are if, uh, you are, you are kept updated and uh, updated about the next webinar that we will be doing and uh, about uh, the other things that we are introducing in codeover like refer and win thing, uh, win program was the part uh, what was a new program that we have started yeah so yeah and uh, with this we have reached to the end of this webinar thank you uh, very much mr nateshin uh, ms pail and ms asna so uh, for taking out time uh, from your extremely busy schedule and joining us for this webinar a big thank to all the attendees as well for joining in for the webinar and this would have been uh, like uh, this this is uh, like the uh, uh, this uh, they they are like uh, i hope like uh, all all the webinars that we have we are doing uh, is adding some things in uh, in terms of uh, some knowledge creation and uh, uh, the industry experts coming in and uh, telling about their experiences uh, they would be motivating the participants to uh, work harder towards uh, like uh, their projects so uh, so it's like very good to see uh, how how we are getting the response of the webinars and of uh, the competition as well so uh thank you everyone for for joining us for this webinar uh and uh like we will be closing the webinar now okay thank you thank you thank you thank you